Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you the easiest junglers to carry on currently in this season and really for the rest of the season because we're on the final patch of the season. This list is geared primarily towards iron through platinum and it definitely has a bias towards simplistic full clear style junglers because that's extremely easy to do and very straightforward. So do keep that in mind. With that being said, with any of these champions, you can climb to at least diamonds. So don't feel like just because I happen to put a champion you like in a lower tier that somehow me or the world is out to get you. That being said, let's get started. First off on the list, we have Elise. Iron through platinum, definitely not a champion most players should be looking for. She falls off incredibly hard and her biggest strength comes from her level three turret dives. She arguably has the strongest level three turret dive in the game because she can dodge and swap turret aggro. Low elo doesn't know how to do this even if you know how to do it because you're an elise player in low elo your teammates will not know how to dive with you they either won't follow you or will follow late or go in too early just don't play this champion unless you really like it in which case you should do it anyways for next one we have zed zed is very poop as well he is hard to pull off and he falls off. There's going to be a massive bias in this video towards junglers who fall off and can't team fight properly. Zed jungle is one of those junglers. And for those of you wondering, why are you putting things like Zed and Blitzcrank on here? Any jungler within the last couple of years who's received a huge buff to be able to be a jungler, so for example, at least one or more abilities to get extra damage against monsters, will be on this list, or at least I tried my best to put him on this list. Zed is one of those champions. He got a big buff a while back. Next up, we have... Evelyn. Now, Evelyn is a champion I like a lot, but she's really not that good and she hasn't been that good for a while. With that being said, there are still challenger Evelyn players, so just keep that in mind. Her biggest issue is she can't solo most of the junglers in the game, so for scuttle fights or for 2v2 fights, she's not very good. Plus, in iron through platinum, players have an issue with making a mistake, which is really bad on Evelyn because then you lose your Dark Seal or Mijaya stack. So at best, we can put her in C tier, but she's still a decent option if you can get down just not dying and uh, stacking up. Next up on the list, we have Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai is similar to Elise where she has decent dives, she has some decent jungle routes, she can play really aggressive, go behind enemy lines and tunnel over for ganks. She doesn't scale and her team fights aren't that good though, so at best we'll put her in D tier for iron through platinum. A champion with similar issues is Nidalee. She can play really aggressive early game. She's dark seal and mesh reliant like Evelyn, but much more challenging to play and pull off. There's no reason to put yourself through that. Just don't bother. Then we have Karthus. He's been over nerfed, but you can still play him against tanky style junglers like Zac. You can run a double max health burn items, demonic plus Leandris. On top of that, you get the Zhonya's and he actually plays really well against tanks because of that reason we'll put him towards the top of d tier instead plus he's a full clear jungler let's do some off meta junglers we have rumble i actually think rumble's fairly underpicked he has a lot of carry potential the main issue is people just don't understand how to clear on him and they don't play around his level six power spike properly outside of that i actually enjoy playing him a lot and i think he's a lot of fun but for most players he's not going to be a very good Hit. Brand is a champion that used to actually be really good. He used to be able to full clear, like kind of full HP. One ability would get him full HP off of Raptors, but since they've changed the jungle item at the start of this season, it's not really worth it to where I'd say he's honestly F tier. He's just not rewarding to play. His ganks are meh, his clears are meh, his solos are meh. His scaling is great and his team fights are good. Everything outside of that is pretty terrible though. So we'll leave him in F tier along with him. We'll put Zyra, similar issues, and we'll go ahead and throw down some others. So Ezreal, Camille, she does reduce damage against monsters because she was too good, even with neutral damage against monsters. Next up, we have a jungler who's been traditionally B through S tier for most of the season. Add is Poppy. They were tired of her dominating high elo and kind of pro play, so they giga nerfed her. So now she's actually pretty bad even for lower elo. Wouldn't recommend her unless you're picking her against a strong counter pick, so when you can hard counter with your W even then, her late game falls off quite a bit so poppy's gonna be down here ivern's gonna be down here he's too team reliant if you're playing him truly in solo queue not duo queue he's very meh and relies way too much on teammates he's not in the best spot at the moment next up we have a wukong similar issues as poppy he's been good in the past now he's been over nerfed as a jungler i'm gonna go ahead and put orn in e tier as well the very main reason is he kind of falls off in a weird way it's hard to explain but if you've ever played him you'll know what i'm talking about his 
pre-6 ganks are okay. His level 6 ganks are great. His team fights are good, but there's a weird fall off point for him. So we'll put him right behind Wukong. I think that's more than fair. Next up is Morgana. She's going to be very hard to climb with against ranged AD junglers like Graves or Kindred. It's practically unplayable. Having a hard champion spread plays well against tankier champions and she goes double health max burn items and against AP champions as well. In general, she'll be kind of E tier. And then on that, we have Kiana. She's floated around a lot as a jungler, but she's definitely somewhere around E or F tier. She's not easy to pull off. If you are a Kiana one trick though, you might be able to make it work. But at the same time, you're gonna have weak solos for things like scuttle fights and early 2v2. So you'll have to stay away from that type of stuff. Next up is Scion. He's an absolute team fight beast, scaling beast. He clears extremely fast, full HP always. With that being said, he's received so many nerfs. Like he does reduce damage against turrets whenever he's in his dead form. And on top of that, he can be abused by strong early game junglers that can cancel his knockup or just by constantly dodging his knockup. Things like Belveth, Warwick, Graves Kindred. He definitely has matchups that can put him in a bad spot, which is why I'll put him in E tier, but I do think he has a lot of potential in team fights. After Scion, we have a champion who actually doesn't have any jungle monster bonuses, but her ganks are disgusting and scaling is really good. And that's Trist. Trist jungle is similar to Twitch jungle, where if you get a gank in your first clear, she's absolutely disgusting, super strong, but she's not easy to pull off. And if you get invaded level one, which the enemy should do every single time, it puts you in a very, very, very bad situation. A lot of these champions, if you get invaded level one, it's hard to come back. That's kind of like the Bran, the Zyra, uh, Camille, Ezreal, the Triss. They can't come back from that, or at least not consistently. Next up on the list, we have Jax. He's a solid D tier champion. I think he's definitely overlooked because people are building him wrong. They're getting team at too late because they're starting with refill potion. If you're playing Jax correctly, I think he's definitely uh, somewhere around D or C tier for low mid elo because his E cancels out everything. You can split push and we'll put him here above these champions. Once again, don't be salty. Rek'Sai, the Nidalee, they don't scale and they're not necessarily easy to pull off. Next up is Gwen. She's floated around a lot like Kiana, but lately she's been extremely low tier. We'll put her in front of Triss and behind Scion. Next up is Trindomir. He is also low tier. He he has insane scaling. His ganks are kind of meh and his split pushing is really good. We'll put him in front of Gwen, but behind Scion. He can really struggle in team fights if the enemy team has enough AOE hard CC to where he can't play the game anyways. So yeah, this is a good spot for him. Next up on the list, we have Zach. He's a solid B tier jungler. The reason why is he has a super easy full clear style play. Full clear gank, full clear gank. His team fights are great. He is skill shot reliant. Low elo players with crappy computers, crappy internet can struggle to land his E. If you're consistently missing your E on Zach, there's really not a whole lot he brings to the table. Outside of that, he's a super easy champion. Then we have Fiddlesticks, same exact thing. Easy full clears in the gank, full clear gank, full clear gank. Great team fighter, decent scaler. And he's one of the best champions possible possible if you're in smurf queue even if you're playing against a challenger riven player or like the rank one vein your fear doesn't discriminate it shuts them down regardless so even if you're playing against people better than you locking in fill sticks is an easy way to get a great baseline value in the same way that picking yumi is a great way to get baseline value as a support then we have omumu he's gonna go uh, he'll go in front of both of them I actually think Amumu's in a strong spot right now, particularly I'd say iron through low gold. There's not a whole lot of counterplay. He has so much damage reduction. He doesn't take much damage at all in team fights. His Q and R are very easy to pull off where there's not much question. Like if you don't land your Q, you generally don't R. Amumu, super easy, super high value. With that being said, he is a worse version of Zac pre six. At six, I'd still say Zac is a bit better, but in team fights, he's much easier to pull off and understand what to do. And we're gonna put him in front of Fiddlesticks because if you're out of position, you're not gonna die quite as fast as a fiddlesticks but these guys are all pretty similar in play style and pathing next up we have warwick what makes him so good in low elo in particular is people will try to solo you when there's no way to solo warwick raw to the death standing still fighting with the way his passive healing works and his lethal tempo is a great champion as long as you can get team out on your first back so don't start refill then we have kha'zix only because of his high carry and snowball potential he's in a similar category as sort of nidalee i wouldn't say rek'sai and elise because they can turret dive pretty easily but he's in a very similar category as the Nidalee where he's okay pre-6 and he has a lot of carry potential. The only reason I'm putting him up this high is Eclipse is a bit overtuned right now and he also has access to Surlds to where he'll go W Evolution second and then in team fights he's a massive slow bot and he gives ridiculous value, especially if he has the stronger backline and he's just throwing out Ws, it's very difficult to get to his backline. It's pretty annoying. Then we have Shivana. Shivana 
same exact thing she aligns with these three champs she just power clear gank power clear gank great team fight great scaling style champion and she's going to force you to prior dragons bonus damage against dragons which is quite useful since dragons are tankier now within the last few patches she can take those quite well next up is nunu he's more of a ganker jungler on this b tier than anyone else the only reason why he gets on here is he teaches you the fundamental of ganking and kind of playing for the carries on your team he's a really solid champion and he oftentimes fluctuates from b tier to s plus tier it just depends on what's going on right now he is a low b tier though that is pretty much i think gonna wrap up the b tier let's move back on down to the c tier we have nocturne at c tier i think he has a lot of potential playing with ultimate hunter playing shredder not burst lethality shredder nocturne with things like bort and shield bow is way better than playing him lethality burst lethality burst is kind of crap right now in my opinion then we have mordekaiser rush rileys on him super easy carry no one can get away from you he's a mindless full clear full hp style jungler check him out he's incredibly easy after mordekaiser is a champion that's a bit more challenging to pull off however his late game scaling just raw carry potential i think makes up for it and that's nasus plus they buffed his wither recently to slow even more attack speed to where if the enemy team picks a cal or vein any kind of auto attack based champion you can completely cripple them in a fight and they can't play the game so nasus easy c tier his main weakness is being invaded and dying to the invade as long as you don't die to the invade pre-6 it doesn't matter you hit level 6 you can solo anyone anyways and then you get divine sunder and then you can 1v2 1v3 next up we have viego this champion is similar to master Yi. he has massive resets his main issue is the keep nerfing his resets now when you go inside of somebody you're still taking turret shots and it takes so long you got to get even closer it's pretty annoying i think he's been over nerfed because of pro play it's hurt him a lot for solo queue you can still make him work but you have to be so patient we're gonna put him behind evelyn here because of that reason his ganks are kind of meh his solos are super meh pre-6 uh his clears are super meh as well nothing good about him pre-6 honestly super sub average champion but once he's six he does have that kind of 1v5 carry potential as long as he's not out of position next up is lilia we're gonna go ahead and throw her oh man she's somewhere in d or c tier we'll put her in c tier she plays extremely well against low damage tank style champions because she has burn max health burn in her kit and then she can also build two max health burn style items so playing against things like nunu and zach is actually really good for her as long as you have your prance built up before ganks or before team fights she's an absolute monster then we have vi vi similar to the kha'zix the reason why she's not as consistent is she she doesn't have that range slow. Kha'Zix has a ranged AoE slow that doesn't really miss. Vi is only melee and once she goes in she can't really get out of fights which makes it to where you really need to understand when to go in and when you can't go in otherwise you'll be dying constantly. Then we have Dr. Mundo. He's actually insanely good. Iron through platinum. You can take something like lethal tempo and get super tanky. You have massive damage output extra AD in his kit and as long as the enemy team doesn't have a max health damage style champion like Lilia or a Bran or a Vayne. If, they, if they're lacking those things and they're a bunch of flat damage champions then he's basically impossible to deal with insane damage output he heals so much and he'll cut spin way 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 over nerf after mundo we have the clown lord himself shako he falls off extremely hard he lacks the range that kha'zix has he lacks the tankiness shivana has his clears aren't necessarily easy to pull off he's an extreme one trick style champion just like with any champion on this list for the most part Things like Camille, Jungle are always going to suck no matter how good you are because she has reduced damage against monsters. But for most of the champions on this list, if you one trick them, they're basically B tier. And uh, Shaco falls into that category. Definitely don't recommend him in general. He stays over nerfed because Shaco mains are too good at him to where AP Shaco is practically always unplayable, especially as a laner. And then playing Shaco jungle is just not that rewarding. If your initial gank once you hit level three doesn't pan out, he can fall very far behind because his full clear is crap. It's only his first three camps that are fast because his box setup. Next up, we have Kindred coming in after Shaco, just because you have to Kai. If you understand how to Kai on Kindred, she's basically always at least B tier, if not higher. But kiting is so important on her. If you stand still, pretty much any melee champion on this list will be able to solo her. We have a bit of a polarizing champion. A lot of low elo players think it's their mechanics holding them back when in reality it's just thought process and positioning. Lee Sin is the ultimate noob trap champion where even if you're a challenger player, you can play zero games of Lee Sin and still be rank one. But there's like low elo players picking him for some reason and then they lose all their games because he doesn't scale. Full build, he's useless comparison to other champions. He's not easy to pull off at ganks. Very invade heavy, kind of scuttle, dive heavy style jungler. A lot of his 
best things aren't easy to pull off in lower elo which is why at best we can put him c kind of d tier here i'd be fine putting him in front of the, the jacks or just behind the kindred is a pretty good spot for him we're gonna make one final change we're gonna slide evelyn down just right in front of lee sin next up we have a few off meta junglers we have quinn she's somewhere between the e and the d tier she has decent ganks a good enough level three where she'll be full hp level three but it's kind of slow her ganks are decent enough to where putting her somewhere near rumble i think is fair but uh, but where i'd say in front of trindamir i think is pretty safe riven jungle is in a similar boat as camille to where she doesn't clear healthy and she doesn't clear fast either so she's just kind of horrible We'll go ahead and put her in front of Camille, but just barely. Next up is Volibear. He gets changed a lot. He gets nerfed and buffed. He's super viable as a top laner and generally as a jungler as well. He's very similar to Warwick. He takes a little bit more thought process, I'd say. And I don't think he scales quite as well as a Warwick either, but his power spike level six, I think his six is better than Warwick. It's more versatile for turret diving and for gap closing. We'll go ahead and put Volibear in front of the Nasus, but behind the Mordekaiser. Next up is Zin Zhao. I love this champion so much much i've always really enjoyed playing him but he's been way over nerfed and left in the dust to where he doesn't feel good even if you're ahead on him you never really feel like you're ahead it makes me really really sad we're gonna have to drop him somewhere in the d tier oh man he's very easy but he's just not strong we'll put him in front of the jacks next up is olaf play him life still play him full clear gank style olaf and he is disgustingly easy particularly if you have an enchanter support on your team if you don't have an enchanter speed up support or pill support on your team i'd say olaf is low key kind of low tier but if you do have that then he'd be a tier even s tier but in general if you are going to play him with a full life still crit build he's definitely easier to pull off than most of these champions i'd say somewhere right here that's only with the life still build if you're going to be building with crappy bruiser tank items like stride break and like warmog's just stupid crap then he's garbage tier you have to be life still crit you heal for so much because of his passive he has so much attack because of his passive constantly life still build really feels nice on him then we have sejuani she is very similar to a volley bear in the sense of beefy she can scrap down pretty well i'd say her ganks are a little bit better but her clears aren't as healthy and her one versus ones to the death aren't as healthy either she's somewhere in the c tier i, I could see the argument for her being in front of nasus or behind nasus i'd say she's we'll put her behind the viego i think is fair if her team's very melee heavy she's even better because she can pop out more stuns but if her team's ranged heavy she feels kind of weird because it's hard to even get off your stun before you are and if you are first you can't stun them for 10 seconds so generally you want to stun break it then r break it if your team isn't melee heavy that's not always an option and then you miss out on a lot of cc next up is silas he can't full clear and he just sucks his ganks are okay can't full clear can't solo very well loses all of his hp in his jungle because of that reason we're gonna have to put him in uh ooh, we'll put him in front of brand next up is set he's in a similar boat as these champions i think he's incredibly easy to play and he has some decent power spikes around his board we'll throw him in front of uh we'll throw him right here because he's incredibly easy to play next up is Ramus. i think he has a lot of potential especially if the buff comes through that makes him not slow down when he's on his w i don't think that buff will go through because it's very op him never slowing down however he does play extremely well against ad comps he's very straightforward to play three camp clear gank 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 i hate his level six his level six is such a horrible power spike compared to what it used to be a couple of years ago before they changed it it is what it is though he's somewhere in the c tier very easy to gank on okay scaling easy jungle route we'll put him right oh yeah we'll put him right here it's just super easy to pull off now if you're playing against an ap comp he's basically d tier but against ad comps he's high c tier low b tier next up is timo he has so much extra damage against monsters on his e his blind dart lasts twice as long against monsters as well this champion is giga slept on the main issue is you have to know how to kite on him and i'd say iron 3 platinum generally struggles with that so at best we're going to be able to put this champion in low c tier high d tier leave him for here for now he's unironically better than zin zhao jungle outscales him could solo zin zhao jungle his ganks aren't quite as good in the early game but his scale is way better the team fight is going to be better with the mushrooms as well next up is pantheon he's a bit of a cheese jungler good gang clears can be kind of hit or miss we'll put him behind the karthus but in front of the rek'sai because he's much easier to play than that easier to find a value in. then we have talon i think this champion has slept on a lot he has been nerfed away from being a jungler but he's still pretty strong we'll put him we'll put him in front of the nidalee behind rek'sai skarner the champion where he can only play jungle but he's absolute doo-doo feces this champion 
Kobe makes me really sad. Oh man, we'll put him in front of Trin behind Sion. Rough champ, man. He's just, his scaling is not that good. His CC is not that good. His mobility is not that good. He can't solo people. He can't scuttle fight. His 2v2 is not that good. There's just nothing really rewarding about him. The, the mobility, the burst, the tankiness, the ganks, the pre-6, nothing's just good. It's all slightly below average for the most part the only thing he has is his point and click r but there's other abilities just as good or better than that like a fiddle fear which isn't an ultimate and lasts way longer to where it's like Ugh. next up is talia a champion who's impossible to balance as a jungler so they generally leave her as a lower tier we'll throw her down in front of nidalee and in front of the rumble with a similar champion and that is graves he doesn't scale and he falls off really hard and low elo generally doesn't know how to kite if you've noticed we don't really have any ranged junglers in high tier i'd say b tier is, is like high tier right we don't have any low elo just for the most part does not understand how to kite and if you're playing a ranged champion and you're not kiting the majority of melee champions will solo you and that's why we're gonna have to put graves so low on this list because this champion doesn't scale man and he relies a lot off invading if you don't understand how to invade when to invade you're not gonna be able to do much he's a snowball reliant champion with less range than kha'zix so i'm referring to the kha'zix ranged slow ability that can still give a lot of value in team fights even if you can't find a good angle Jarvan, not very rewarding, even if you get ahead and the majority of his kit is skill shots to where they can consistently flash it, dash it, juke it, hourglass it. It's only so rewarding, even if you're ahead. We will toss it in front of these champs because I'd say he's easier to pull off and still find value. Next up is Cho'Gath. He has insane scaling decent ganks and he's incredibly tanky easy to play in team fights he does struggle against max health burn champions like the lilia brand or playing against the max health true damage vein however he's still a solid jungle pick and is heavily overlooked he's definitely easier to pull off than a lot of these champions i'll say that much he's at least d tier and it's, it still looks funny to put him in front of graves but he's legit way easier to pull off and carry with great burst and like really better ganks than the graves you just walk up slow silence knock up once they're slowed in silence, they can't dodge your Q super easy. Then we have a champion who I ban pretty much every game if I'm trying to pick a full clear style jungler, and that's Kane. He can start in your jungle leashless, clear full HP. He can out clear any full clear style jungler, at least in terms of HP or time for the most part. The only champion who can really out clear him is Karthus. That is about it. We're going to have to go ahead and put Kane in A tier, first champion there. Then we have Aatrox, super tempo heavy jungler. He's actually not that bad. He's kind of similar to playing Kha'Zix. Just a little bit more tricky because you're trying to land Q-tippers. We'll throw him in front of the Talon, but behind the Graves. Then we have Garen. He lacks a lot of mobility, but has great scaling and solid clears. Due to his inconsistent and weak ganks, though, it's very hard to place him highly. At best, we can place him in, I'd say, E tier in front of some of these off-meta champions. We'll put him right here because he does outscale the Poppy. He's got worse ganks. Him and Poppy, you could switch in and out. Then we have Malphite. He has pretty bad ganks. Once he is six though, the enemies are on a clock. They have to try to end it because Malphite's scaling is pretty scary. And his level six is super strong to where he's very, 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 very rewarding. And you can feel the rewards once you hit six. Every gank's pretty much a kill. Because of that reason, he's incredibly easy to play. You have to be disciplined, full clear gank, full clear gank. And you should be level six. And Malphite's also gotten some buffs. They buffed his passive and they buffed his AP scaling on his Q and his R. It'd be very easy to put him here in front of a lot of these meta champions. We'll put him right there. Super easy to pull off. Very high value. Next up is diana great ganks decent solos solid scaling and a lot of aoe cc on her r we got to put her in the a tier she can also access zhonya's quite easily which plays well in team fights extremely well she is a great champion to have and high shred potential because of her passive bonus damage against monsters she can shred dragons really fast then we have master yi He's a bit hit or miss. If your team does not have a front line, your team's full squishy and the enemy team has CC, I wouldn't really recommend him. If your team does have a proper comp though with a frontline tank and enchanter, Master Yi is easily A tier. All you need is one pick on him, one person out of position, you win the game. Then we have Twitch. He has a very high carry potential. You do need to know how to kite. And he's very bullyable, similar to most of these low tiers in the early game if you're invading him and messing with him. Because of that reason, we're not gonna be able to put him past Poppy. Next up is Rengar. We're going to put him in the D tier somewhere. He's not easy to pull off. He doesn't necessarily scale. He can be rewarding in the same sense as Shaco is if you want trick him and you start to get that value, but he's definitely not easy to play. Because of those reasons, we're going to stick him behind an easy champion, and that is going to be 
Pantheon. Next up is Gragas. He's generally crap because of pro play. So his burst single target isn't that great. His scaling isn't that great. His clears aren't that good. Because of that, we're going to put him behind Graves. Next up on the list, we have Trundle. He's very easy to play, but his full clear sucks. He's similar to work where he needs team at first item rush. However, his solos aren't good because he has his pillar level three, which does zero damage. So his scuttle fights are, are meh. His team fight scaling is situational. The enemy jungler has to be a tank or the enemy team has to have a tank in general, and he can easily get kind it out but he's very simplistic to play because of that we'll put him in the c tier and we'll throw him in front of some of these kind of one tricky style junglers we'll put him behind the mundo his scaling isn't as good his solo potential isn't as good as mundo either next up on the list we have shen his main issue is he is team at reliant jungler outside of that his team fighting is insane with his r especially if you have a hyper carry such as vein or master e on your team he's pretty nutty that makes him situational so we can't put him up too high best place to put him i think is somewhere around these turd burglars i'd say in front of ivern's probably best because he does have decent solos he's got decent pre-6 ganks it's just his clears aren't the best Next up is Maokai. He's gotten a lot of buffs lately, making him a more consistent jungler. And, and you can definitely feel that his clears are good enough. His ganks are insane. His team fighting's insane. His R is super fast. There's no way to outrun his R anymore. It will hit and then it speeds him up when it does hit. Because of those reasons, we are gonna have to put him up super, super high. I'd say in front of Kane even. In front of Kane or behind Kane doesn't really matter. It's about the same either way. Then we have Hecarim. Got a lot of tempo, decent scaling, solid ganks. There's no skill shots in his ganks and he's fast. So high mobility, point and click card, CC. He has good burst, good shred. Burst being initial impact, lots of damage, and then shred being over time, he shreds. He really has everything to where we have to put him in A tier. I'd say in front or behind the Maokai, it's hard to choose. And then we have Echo. His buff pushed him back up to the top three junglers. He's not necessarily easy to pull off because his initial clear is kind of met and his one versus ones pre six are kind of crap. If you can make it to level six without dying on him though, his carry potential is absurd. And then we have Blitzcrank. He's a very interesting jungler. If you're playing at a D1 and up level, he's essentially S plus tier. If you're not though, you're probably building the wrong items, doing the wrong jungle route, taking the wrong runes taking the wrong level order. On top of that, no matter how you build him, he generally falls off in the true late game against tanks like Scion or Ornn. Uh, he's not gonna be the tankiest. He's not gonna be the biggest shredder, the biggest burster. For those reasons, he's incredibly hard to place here. For lower elo, uh, probably put him somewhere in the C or D tier. I'd say he would be in the D tier, unfortunately probably somewhere around here. His ganks are extremely strong and you just run up, knock him up, take a step back, hook, shred him down, super easy. The main issue is if you're dying on him and you let the game go super late, it's hard to win. And to round off the list, we have Udyr at S tier. What makes Udyr a true S tier jungler is the fact that you full clear on him. You can build him AP or AD. He has max health damage in his kit. He has a speed up. He has hard point and click CC. He scales. He can solo people easily. His ganks are simple to pull off. He really has everything you're looking for on a consistent carry jungler. There's nothing he can't do other than having ranged attacks. That is his only inherent weakness, but it's easy to play around when you consider his mobility and his other strengths. Plus, you have access to speed up items like Dead Man's Force of Nature, Turbo Chem Tank if you really felt like that was necessary which it's not generally and that is going to wrap up this tier list for the easiest junglers to carry low mid elo with if you guys enjoyed don't forget to like comment and subscribe and remember it's just a tier list don't let your dreams be memes my name is king sticks thank you for watching and i'll catch you guys next time